You're listening to The Dating Den with dating and relationship badass and best-selling author, Marnie Batista. Every week, you'll get the raw truth from top experts and real people on the important dating, sex, and relationship issues you want to know about. So if you're ready for true talk that's authentic and unfiltered, and you're not afraid to be called out on your <clears throat> stuff, then you're ready for what's next. The Dating Den, episode 57 with Christine Malsbury. The Capsule Approach for Dating. How to Simplify Getting Dressed for a Date in Five Minutes or Less. Darlings, wonderful, fabulous ladies who I love so very, very much. Welcome to The Dating Den today, tonight, whenever the hell you're listening. Um, I'm super excited about today's show because um, this girl is like, I think we're going to be BFFs and we met online. (laughs) So since I don't date online anymore. Um, I'm super excited that I met a cool person online. <laughs> um, and so uh, I found Christine Melsbury uh, online on Facebook. And I'm going to tell you how and then I'm going to let her talk a lot today. But this is really cool because I'm inspired actually by social media. Um, yeah, there's a lot of crap going on. And there's a lot of like bad news. But what I really love about it is connecting with amazing people. And one of my friends and colleagues was just bragging about, you know, how easy it is for her to get dressed in the morning. And she had these before and after pictures. And she just looked amazing. And I sh- she's not a girly girl. And I was like, what? And lovely Christine <laughs> was all about it. And that's how we connected. And I'm super excited to work with her next year. So welcome, Christine, to the den. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to be here. And uh, I share your feelings about um, community on Facebook. I think Facebook and other forms of social media are so, so, so powerful and uh, can really serve to bring us closer. So, yeah, I love it. I love Shout it. Out. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so yeah. let me tell you all a little bit about her because, like, literally she is – like a confluence of like uniqueness that blossomed forth into this business that she has. So she has spent decades. First of all, she's a PhD. So, you know, that means S M A R T. Um, She spent uh, decades supporting individuals and institutions in their journey towards authentic voice, which, you know, I'm all about style, beauty and productive systems and lives. And in 2015, she launched her first business, the Brazen Beauty Movement, of which I am a part of on Facebook, uh, consulting for women on style and wardrobe transformation, professional business development, communication, image, and visibility strategies. And she has spent the last 20 years, although she looks like she's 12, so I don't know how she actually has done that, but (laughs) she's spent over two decades focused on creative, personal, institutional transformation. Um, she's also done really cool things like the early part of her career she worked with uh, museums in London and Philadelphia before she shifted to education and multicultural global issues she um, is a a professor in a former career Um, she's managed uh, launching schools in Brooklyn, New York um, that graduated twice as many immigrant students in the New York City School District Uh, which is one of the largest school districts in the world, by the way. Um, She is, like, renowned um, from her work. She taught at Vassar, the University of Hawaii, UCLA. Um, And now she's put this all together in this amazing, amazing movement uh, about, you know, having a boss, a girl boss closet. Um, (laughs) So I'm really excited to to have you here. So... Um, You and I, you know, have chatted a lot, but I never really actually heard about, you know, why you became a ninja at, um, you know, getting dressed in five minutes or less and and looking like amazing and put together. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Great question. So I um, started out, as you read in my, the early part of my career was, um, in the arts and in style and um, and fashion and painting and museums. And I was just in love with all of it and photography. Um, and then I kind of launched this like big deal career. I was an academic and I was an educator and an educational leader in educational leadership. Um, and I moved a lot, moved a lot. I traveled a lot and I wanted to feel good. And because I have these artistic sensibilities, it really mattered to me what I was putting on my body. And yet, 
um, I was so focused on my career that um, I, I frequently would just sort of stop taking care of myself and I would end up looking like a hot mess and then I would feel badly about myself and then I would push myself even harder and, um, and then get even more exhausted. And I was just sort of basically doing what most 21st century women who are high level professional women do, right? I mean, like for the most part, we're exhausted and um, I don't even have children. So I was um, just pushing myself, pushing myself. When I moved, I was teaching out of the University of Hawaii. It was one of the like low points of feeling good about my body and my image. Um, okay, well, I, let me just let me just pause you there, okay? Because you said like yeah. three things. First of all, two questions. One is, what is Christine's version of a hot mess look like? Because I want to <laughs> know like what is that? Like what is an actual hot mess look like? Um, and the second thing is, which I want you to talk about is, so here you are in like what most people would say, like a fantasy career move, right? Like you're in Hawaii yeah. and there, and what you said was like, and I was feeling shit about myself, which yeah. sucks because you're in Hawaii. So first of all, what is a hot mess? And then what does a hot mess look like in Hawaii? Yeah. So, um, I was a hot mess cause I didn't feel good. Right. Like from, I think from the outside folks have always said, that I, I kind of always look like me and, um, I've never put on massive amounts of weight. My hair has always sort of been the same. I, you know, whatever, I've always sort of looked like me, but I didn't feel good in my body. And so because I didn't feel good in my body, it manifested in how I was carrying myself. So it wasn't even necessarily about the clothes. It was about how I felt about myself, but then that also dovetailed into the clothes, but there's a second piece. And the second piece is I thought I had to look like a professor and I, and oh. <laughs> you, do you see what I'm saying? And I was like, and I was, in, and to be honest with you, I was sort of intimidated by what was going on. Like my career took off before I think I was emotionally ready and I was intimidated and I was dressing the way that I thought a professor should look, but I wasn't dressing like myself. And so I didn't feel good about myself. I didn't feel like I looked like myself and all of that kind of compounded into this daily life where I had a problem. I didn't really know how to fix it. And instead I ignored it and just focused on working harder and, and hoped that that would get me out of the horrible depressive funk that I was in. Oh my God. First of all, if you're listening and you're like, uh, this is me, like my career is like really rocking, but I'm freaking exhausted. And I don't know what to do about it. And I love that you said this piece of, I was supposed to look like a professor, but it didn't look like me. And that is just, that is so sad because I, I can imagine like in dating, right? Like people will be like, my accountants are like, you know, how do I not show up as like people think an accountant should be? Right. Yeah. Or do I, am I dressing like an accountant or am I dressing like an engineer or am I dressing like a lawyer or am I right? And then you're doing this all day long and you don't feel about yourself. And so you definitely don't feel yourself that when you're going out, that's why so many of my listeners are like, I feel weird in dresses or if I dress sexy, then that's slutty. Right. Because neither of those external pictures are reflecting anything going on in the inside. Right. So there's like, there's, there's like a middle ground, right? And, and that's the piece that I'm always trying to strike when I'm working with clients is like clothing is definitely about identity, but it's also about, a, it's also about belonging. So it's about my individual personal identity and my own authentic voice, but it's also about belonging to a particular group at a particular time and particular time and space. Right. So I, I, I couldn't like roll into class with ripped jeans but at the same time, I didn't have to dress up in all these little like pencil dresses all the time <laughs> when what I really wanted to do was wear jeans. Like there's a middle ground there. Do you know what I mean? And like part of the issue with style and beauty in the United States is we have totally lost sight of what that middle ground is. We have no fucking idea. Yes. And we don't have any, like it's yes. just gone. Yes. It's gone. It's been obliterated from our like national consciousness because we have on the one hand, this beauty industrial media complex that's like, here's what beauty is, but it's all airbrushed. And then on the other hand, we've got this reaction to it, which is like a defiant, well, I'm just going to wear sweatpants then. 
And, and neither of those two stances are helpful, I think. Right. I, I totally agree. And it, and, you know, having young daughters, um, you know, like my one daughter spent a year in uh, traveling for college, you know, she lived in Australia, she went to New Zealand, she went around Europe, she came back to California and she goes to school in Berkeley, which is super progressive. But what she realized, I think this is really interesting was she said in Australia in Sydney, people's fashion actually represented their own individual style and look. It didn't matter what Kim Kardashian was wearing or anybody really. And then what she said in Berkeley is that it's a Berkeley and so you're a professor, right? So it's this like free speech, like, you know, let's not be binary, you know, whatever individual, but you're like a cool, hip, funky Berkeley person who got like the Berkeley outfit, right? Like you said, belonging, right? right? Like right. I'm, I'm like a, I'm like a hippie, modern feminist, radical right. chick. Um, but I'm not really wearing what I want to wear. I wear what women who feel that way are supposed to wear and they're doing exactly. it at, at whatever age they can literally like wake up and see a billboard or look at a, a phone or, or watch a movie. Yeah. That's exactly right. Well, that's, that's fucked exactly up, right. Christine. <laughs> <laughs> so what did, so what, I don't even know you, but I'm like, did you wear glasses? Like when you had the professor look like, do you have to like carry a brown leather briefcase? I mean, what's that all about? I got all of these like kind of dumpy shift dresses <laughs> and like wore those. And you said I look young. And so I, I'm a, I, I no longer am because now I'm like, I just turned 40 and I'm like, fuck it. I look amazing. I'm just going to go with this and like yeah. own it for as long as I can. Right. But like as a young professor, especially a female professor in a space that's still dominated by men, right? Like yeah. the people who are successful in the professor are men. I look young. I'm pretty, which is not particularly helpful, right. Yeah. In that particular field. And so I, I, made myself look older and, um, and, and in this attempt to sort of have people take me seriously. And this is another huge point for me around, um, my work on style and beauty is that we, so this is like the essence of the brazen beauty movement. And it really comes out of my direct experience. Like you can be awesome and smart and really good at what you do and pretty, like, it's okay. Like you don't have to choose one or the other. And I feel like I've spent my entire life choosing one or the other. Like I felt like it was like, I was either going to be, you talk about dating. It's like, I was either going to be like the pretty girl in the rich man's arm, or I was going to be my own person and like smart and get a PhD, but I couldn't be beautiful and do that. You know what I mean? I had to be smart and do that. Like, it was like, I just had a lot of fucked up ideas and I don't really know where I got them. I just sort of accumulated them along the way in this like weird warped, like, funhouse mirror society that we live in around women's beauty, you know, where there's just like all of these compounding messages. And you're like, how do I even figure this out? Like who, like, who am I? Who do I get to be? Right. Well, and what you said, when I think this is really important for, I'm like, wake up, get off your Facebook right now. Um, you're pretending that none of it really matters yet. Yeah, right. Like, exactly. but like, we're all wearing clothes, right? We're all looking exactly. in the mirror. We're all like, there's a little conversation going on in our head about all of this. So the bottom line is like, wake the fuck up, right? Because it actually hugely matters, especially when you're looking at, <laughs> at looking at being a beautiful, powerful woman. And all of us are beautiful and powerful. And we can all access that if you decide that you don't want to just ignore it and pretend like it's all going to go away. So what, so I want to hear like what happened in your story. And then let's talk about, um, Let's get real. Like, how do you, how, how do we get dressed in five minutes? <laughs> cool. Yeah. And I'm going to get specific about some outfits as well. So, um, so I moved from the university of Hawaii to Vassar college, which is like really, really, really upper. It's a, it's a wonderful school. It's a beautiful school. Highly recommend, but it's super upper crust. And I became ever more conservative. Like I'm not a conservative woman and I began to dress ever more conservatively. So it was like, again, with like the beautiful pens. I mean, it was gorgeous. I looked gorgeous, but it was like beautiful pencil skirts and pearls. I mean, I do love pearls, but more in a punk rock way. 
as I began my internal transformation, which was a lot of inner work, right? It was a lot of stuff in my head, a lot of dealing with like my upbringing and, you know, some stuff that had happened to me as a kid and just like a really like clear transformation. As I became more and more Christine, my style totally shifted. And I want to, and I'm going to hook it back into my career in a second. My style totally shifted. I began to wear like me clothes. Like I started wearing jeans to the classroom, but I would pair it with like an amazing collared shirt and like a cool turban. Like I put my hair up in like a turban with huge hoop earrings. And then like some fabulous like wrap scarf that I would like wrap all over me, you know what I mean? With heels. So it was like, I, I, I lost this kind of cookie cutter conservative, still beautiful look that I thought that I was supposed to have as a quote unquote professor at Vassar college. And I, and I just sort of got funky, which is me. I'm funky. You know what I mean? I've got tattoos. I've got crazy curly hair. I'm biracial. Like I don't fit easily into a cookie cutter. So I became more myself. But the interesting thing is my relationship with my students totally transformed. Wow. And my, and my relationship with my colleagues totally transformed. And the way I describe it is my students had been trying to access me for years and they couldn't. Like my student evals were always a little bit off. My call, like I wasn't actually myself. And in my last couple years of professoring, the intimacy with my students completely transformed. And like the, the feel in the classroom just blossomed into one of love. My writing style changed and I began to r- write things that were less academic and more bloggy, which is more me anyway, because I'm just like, I'm, the, I'm, I'm a girl next door. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, I'm democratic. I want to be accessible. And, and so everything shifted. It's like, who am I and what did I wear? And But also how what I wore helped to push me in the direction of who I am. It's like uh, they, they work on each other. Does that, am I making yeah. this? No, yeah. totally. It's like there's a synergy, right? So it goes back to that main point, like you think it doesn't matter. But actually, when we're not being authentic, we don't know who we are in our authenticity. It impacts how we dress. It impacts how we show up in our profession with our peers, with our family, with our you know friends, right? So it's this thing that you think doesn't matter that you're ignoring, but guess what? It's the actual secret sauce that opens up and allows your whole life to blossom. And that's, that is authenticity. That's authenticity. And it's a communication tool, right? So we are also communicating who we are to others and, and whether, and, and how we fit into whatever the community is that we are want to belong in or whoever the person is that we're interacting with, with our clothing as well. And I, I love to tell this story because I, it just, I don't know, really illustrates this communication point for me. I was looking for someone to design my website, right? So I'm going through like website designers, website designers. And then I remember like my friend James, you know, gay British James, who's just like the the most awesome person I've ever met designs websites. And I was like, I got to talk to James. And I go down, you know, downtown to his offices and I get out of the elevator and he comes to greet me and he's wearing like black leggings and Birkenstocks and this like long oversized white shirt that hangs to his knees and these fabulous glasses. And he's like, hello, darling. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm hiring James because he (laughs) has a point of view. He is communicating who he is in clothes. Fast forward to hiring my interior designer, who's amazing. She showed up in, well, I mean, I don't want, I don't like sticking in the negative stories, but like the, the way that she communicated who she was because of what she was wearing, I was like, does she have the visual principles that I need in this person? Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. so, so that's where it is this careful dance between fully and authentically expressing who we are, but then also expressing to people strategically what we want them to understand about us. So your accountant, well, the way your accountant dresses on a date is going to be different than how she dresses as an accountant, but she is going to want to look like an accountant and herself at the exact same time. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. So, so let's, let's actually, I have an ex- an example, a real life example. So, um, and I don't think she's an accountant, but she works in, um, 
very high end uh, corporate situation with uh, mostly men, sort of like you were describing academia. And what she really wanted in a partner um, was someone who had a certain lifestyle, right? Like a certain financial um, level of success, certain security. Um, and so how she was showing up for her online dating photos um, and her, uh, her image of who she wanted to belong to and with, right, was this very successful person. So she thought she had to paint this picture and the way she had actually, and I've coached her, and so we, we talked about it. And she put on there, like, if you're looking for someone with stilettos who can, who can rock stilettos in a pinstripe suit, Mm. Right. And it's like, and I said to her, why did you choose that? And she said, well, I feel like I want to belong to, right. I want to attract a certain level of community. I want to belong to, right. This, this level of person, yeah. right. This yeah. world. Now here's the thing. She's super comfortable. She does. She has an affluent lifestyle. Right. So, right. So how, so the question then became, well, but there's this other, like, I see her face. She's like this adorable, soft, like you just want to hug her. Yeah. Right. Effervescent, beautiful, fun, loving, free spirited woman. Right. So how does she incorporate that part of her and yeah. show up to work successfully with men and play in the field of affluence, which is exactly right. the conundrum that you're kind of talking about, right? Because right. it has to be authentic and we have to play out loud in a variety of different circumstances. Right, right. So what do you do? Uh, I would deal with that with cut and fabric, <laughs> really. I mean, um, so I would say that her visual appearance, okay. Let me actually, let me get back up a couple steps. Okay. So when you're going on a date, there's a couple things to weigh. It's not just a visual experience. It's also a sensual and embodied experience. So I'm a huge advocate of going on a date and I am dating and feeling really good in my clothes. So if she's a soft, bubbly, effervescent person, she should wear things on her body that help her to feel soft and effervescent. I'm thinking cashmere, you know, like, yes. or, like, like, or I'm thinking like when I think playful, I think polka dots, you know, like polka dots make me smile. Whenever I, I, I actually went on a date recently. Oh my God. He was so adorable. He, um, he, uh, had on a polka dot, um, sweater and he was like, is this okay that I wore this? And I was like, are you joking with me right now? Like, that's amazing. Like you're a man in a polka dot sweater. Like you're so cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I think polka dots, I think, I mean, I would have to see her picture to like right. prescribe more carefully. I don't think pinstripes. I don't, I don't think pinstripes, but if she wants to communicate quality, quality in clothing is often about the fabric, the quality of the fabric, and about the quality of the cut and silhouette. So these are the kinds of specifics and details I get into when I'm styling my clients because the, the layer of the visual is just the first layer, and that's usually the only one we deal with. But, and you know, because you and I have talked about this a lot, with my ac approach, which is a capsule wardrobe approach, which is a small, intentional mindful wardrobe of about 40 pieces, but we can give or take some pieces that you, that you wear and you have that as your base wardrobe. Some women make it their only wardrobe because you're not spending tons of money on lots and lots and lots of clothes. You can afford to shift your budget around. So you're buying higher quality pieces. And that's the kind of thing that gets communicated like immediately and without a word is the, mm. is the quality of a piece of clothing. Now, you know, I lived in Hawaii. I'm not going to, I'm not going to purchase the same kind of high quality piece if I'm going to the beach or do you know what I'm saying? So it is, it's intentional. It, you, you use it intentionally and strategically. Does that, mm. am I, it does. And it's brilliant. And it, it, to it, it totally does. I'm all like, we're having, by the way, PS, Christine's coming back for another show. Okay. Cause we, we can talk to you for like hours. Um, so here's the thing. So first of all, the, let's talk about the capsule concept. Um, because I think this is huge. That's what really attracted me to you. I'm told, by the way, I'm totally, 
like we're we're down. We're getting our we're getting our capsule together because I am that person who goes in front of the closet and I'm like, um, I'll just wear the same seven things that I wear every single day. Um, yeah. And I totally cop to hiding in the light. And I used to do this, but I don't do it that much anymore. But I used to be like, if you don't like me in my sweatpants, then fuck you anyway. But right. let's just be honest. I used to be like super overweight. So, you know, sweatpants were my go-to. I used to have to do that. And it's just part of the defense, right? Because I don't really know how to do it. So I just pretend like right. I don't give a shit. But actually, I look at pictures of women, you know, just like everybody else in magazines, on social media. And I'm like, if I could just look that well put together. So I'm calling bullshit on myself. Raise your hand out there if you're like, yeah, me too. Um, But I love Capsule because I feel like then I don't need to be like a glamour ninja. It's like granimals for (laughs) grownups. Can I just like take a minute and tell you how much I appreciate how you name things? Like (laughs) you're like manimals. Like I'm obsessed with it. I can't. It's just, it's amazing. I love it. Granimals. Um, I want to honor your honesty and vulnerability to call bullshit on yourself. That defense is so deeply embedded in so many of us that we sometimes can't even get through it, you know? So it, it's, it's really beautiful. And, and my, my skin tingled a little bit when you said it, because I could really feel the, the power in what you said. Um, yeah, we all want to look, we all do want to look beautiful. I think beauty is a, is a woman's birthright and we get to look beautiful in our own way. I mean, we, we all are beautiful. And, you know, I don't consider, here's the difference between me and fashion. Fashion is like, I want to paint something on you. I'm like, I want to sculpt you. I want to bring that beauty and I want to pair away the outside so we can really help that shine. Yeah. I love (laughs) I love it. I love it. So the capsule wardrobe. So I moved from Hawaii to New York city And I moved to the beginning of August and September 15th, when it started getting cold, I opened up my closet and I was like, oh, I don't have anything to wear. And it wasn't like one of those, like, oh, I don't have anything to wear, but I really did. It was like, I literally didn't have anything to wear, like like nothing. Like I'd been living in warm weather places for eight years and like, and nothing. And I was like, fuck, what do I do? Like, I don't have enough money to buy the kind of wardrobe that I want. And this is when I discovered the capsule wardrobe approach. So, um, I, I literally built myself from scratch a wardrobe using this approach that I was able to wear all fall and into the winter. And I initially was very, very stringent with it. So it was, um, it was popularized by a couple of different bloggers who are looking back at some of the early, work of stylists and image consultants in the 1970s. And it's, it's a, it's sort of an, a concept that's been around for a couple of years. That's really taking off. And I think it's taking off one because people are super socially conscious. And I, and I want to talk about the, like both the individual implications and also the social implications of a, of a capsule wardrobe or societal implications. Um, and I think the other reason it's taking off is because it does really help you like express your beauty and, um, and it's also a little bit of like an anti-consumerist stance. So the idea is you let, I'm going to, um, illustrate it for a four season, um, year. Okay. And I know there's like folks in California and stuff like that, but like the idea is like the beginning of fall, the beginning of winter, the beginning of spring, the beginning of summer, you look in your wardrobe and you literally like design your own collection. You're like, great for the next three months, I need four pairs of pants three skirts, eight tops, two dresses, four, four outerwear and seven shoes. I'm just coming up with these numbers, right? right? But you, you make a decision about what you need based on your lifestyle. And I do all of this analysis in my, um, girl boss closet program, um, that's starting soon. And also with my private clients, I take them through this analysis of lifestyle, would it, you know, I have a friend who goes to the theater a lot, right? She's going to have a different kind of capsule than Me. a person who <laughs> works from home. Exactly. Right. Exactly. My current capsule is like slip on clogs and like athleisure joggers. You know what I mean? Like it's a different kind of capsule than when I was working at Vassar. So you have a number and then you can do one of two things. You can shop your own closet And, or you can go out shopping in the stores and bring in new pieces, depending on your budget, depending on what you have. It forces you 
to make critical choices. So I'll, I'll use the four black sweater example. Okay. Um, I recently redid a capsule for myself and I went into my, um, my drawers and I had four black sweaters and to my eye, they all looked exactly the same. Right. And I was like, (laughs) and I also thought I needed all of them. I was like, I live in New York city. I need four black sweaters. And then I was like, Christine, you can't, you have to do the capsule because this is what you do. You right? have to do the capsule. Suck it and up, I buttercup. Like, <laughs> right? and I was like, you're not allowed to not do this. So I'm like, well, crap. And then I, I literally, I spent like an hour. Well, this is also just me because <laughs> it's just like part of, part of my problem. I love clothes, right? So it's like part of it. But anyway, I eventually got down to two black sweaters. And then I got down to one black sweater. A couple weeks into the capsule, I realized those other three black sweaters, I didn't actually love them. I didn't. Wow. One was like, one had like a little bit of a hole and I was like pretending that I didn't care, but I really cared and it had sort of lost its shape. Like one like kind of hit me in the wrong place. So what the capsule also does that I think is really powerful is it forces you to clarify your style and get crystal clear about what is a good piece and what is not a good piece. And that translates back into this idea of quality versus quantity. And for my budget conscious women out there, which I know many of us are thinking about our budgets, I also love to introduce the concept of cost per wear, which is when you have something in your wardrobe and there's something off about it, you naturally will not grab it. And I'm sometimes talking about inches, right? So like I will buy things and and they will be two inches too long. And I don't like where it hits me because it makes my hips look wide. So I don't wear it. And then I've got a piece hanging in my wardrobe that I've spent, I don't know, 50, hundred, 150, $200 on, and it's wasted money. Whereas with a capsule, because you're so thoughtful and so mindful, you buy pieces that you actually wear. So if you think about wearing this piece and taking really good care of it over a couple of years, you've just brought your overall cost down because let's say you wear that one piece that doesn't work for you once, that's 50 bucks a wear. Let's say you wear a piece that's $100, but you wear it 100 times, that's a dollar a wear. I hope I did my math right. You did. It's a dollar. It's a dollar store (laughs) item. There you go, ladies. You could have got it at the Dollar Tree. (laughs) <laughs> that's right. um that's so that's so awesome okay so bef- I, wa- I want to make sure we hit everything and I know everyone is like okay so let's make it be about dating just for fun I know you Good. have like get dressed in five minutes flat yeah so just give us like what's we definitely having you back on but what's the what's the process um to get dressed in five minutes once I have my badass cop capsule because I have a girl boss closet well, you get dressed in five minutes flat because you don't have any choices. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you don't actually have that many clothes. So you you put on what you have because the other pieces you're not allowed to shop for three months. Going oh, back to the idea of that's like. That's so good. So so what if, okay, so I'm just going to play devil's advocate. Go for it. Because there's these ladies out there. They're like, oh, my God, that's so boring. Like, I don't want to wear the same five things. So do you have to have a certain stuff? Like, for me, that sounds kind of awesome. But, like, if you love clothes, if you love shopping, if you don't, you have an issue with not having choice, talk to me about that. Yeah. And I go back and forth with this because I, I just love fashion so much. So, I mean, I, and I want to get back to the dating for a minute as in, in just a minute as well. Cause I do want to give like just a couple of like awesome tips that yep. people can use. Um, cause I love like just an awesome, you know, grab it and go tool in my toolkit. Um, but, uh, yeah, I go back and forth with that. So what I do is like, I've done two years of capsule two th- no, I've done like three, three years of capsuling. Now I have like my staple everyday capsule. And then I have like a smaller professional wardrobe capsule. And then I have like my going out in events capsule. And so, you know, my overall clothing might be like mm, 50 pieces, but my everyday capsule is like 40 pieces, something like that. And, uh, And what I've done is like, maybe I'll be really strict for like six months. And then I give myself like three months off to just play what I'm doing right now. I don't want to share all my stuff. Do I have to share all my stuff? Well, (laughs) do I want to share this? I'll just share it right now. I have a capsule and I'm also uh, doing a subscription clothing rental 
thing. Oh, that sounds fun. Okay. So fucking fun. Oh my so, God. Okay. This is great. It's amazing because I don't have to buy anything. So I have my capsule, my capsule, my fall capsule at this point is perfection because it's an amazing season. You get to wear a lot of jackets. Oh, the other thing that I want to say is like, so the difference between the brazen beauty capsule approach and like most other conventional capsule approaches is like you get to make up your capsule. Like a lot of other capsule wardrobes are like, you have to get X, Y, and Z. Like for example, in my fall capsule, I have two leather jackets. And for a minute, I'm sort of like, really girl, you don't need two leather jackets, but you know what? I really love leather jackets. So whatever, I have two. They're in two different styles. They're both black. I don't care. I wear both of them. Do you know what I mean? So like you get to have what you want. Um, I love it. I, yeah. I love the capsule. It's my, yeah. it's my dream come true. Okay. So let's talk about those tips. Great. Tips and tricks from Christine, the brazen beauty. Number one, feel good in your clothes, right? Yes. So one time I was feeling really insecure and I put on Spanx to a date and I love Spanx and they're also girl bosses and have an incredible company. But I was on this date and I was like, the whole time I was like, oh my God, what if he touches my waist? Huh? He, will- <laughs> he will feel my Spanx. And I sat the whole date thinking about the Spanx instead of the guy. So feel good in your clothes so that your body lights up and you light up and feel sensual in your clothes so that you light up. I firmly believe that men love a happy woman. I love a happy woman. Happy women love, you know what I mean? Like feel, feel good. That could be, I mean, I love a great cashmere there's a lot of poor quality cashmere on the market right now because it's really popular. It, and maybe that's not really a California thing because it's like it's a little bit over there. right now, but that's okay. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> You're like, please stop saying the word cashmere. No, I knit. And so like <laughs> literally I'm obsessed with cashmere. My daughter just asked me to make her another sweater and she's like, can it be cashmere? And I'm like, but of course. <laughs> so I like cashmere. I love it. Yeah, like get a beautiful cashmere. Get like an amazing silk. Silk is a really freaking cool fabric. There's really interesting like recycled fabrics that they're putting on the market. Um, Oh, can I just like really quickly before I forget the social implications of the capsule, which I forgot to say, and then I'll get back to the the, the tip. Um, It cuts down on environmental waste, right? So the overconsumption of clothing right now is harming our world like big time, right? So it's clothing is a labor issue. It's a gender issue because it's women and children working in these factories producing this fast fashion. There's an amazing documentary called The True Cost of Fashion, highly recommend. Um, you know, we we give stuff to goodwill. It it gets dumped onto the island of Haiti. And there's just massive amounts of clothing deteriorating and polluting, like it doesn't actually get used, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a huge issue going on with our overconsumption of clothing. So that's just the social issue that I want to point to a minute. Okay, back to fun tips. Capsuleforyourchildren.com. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> right. All right. So feel good in your clothes, feel sensual, light your body up. The second thing I would say is pick one feature. Maybe I'm, I, So the funny thing about like doing this work is I always feel like everybody already knows this stuff. And then people are like, no, Christine, I don't know this. And I'm like, really? Because I don't want to be patronizing. They're like, no, no, Tommy. Okay. So just pick a feature. What do you want? My boobs. Exactly. The girls. Show off the girls. Uh, My ass is my moneymaker. It's amazing. You know, so I, you know, show that off or the legs or the eyes, but not all of it. You know, totally because then it loses the impact. Totally. Then you look actually like Kim Kardashian, which is just like a big overwhelming. But literally, that's such a and if you love her, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sure she's a nice girl. But like fashion wise, I'm overwhelmed. Right. Because that's exactly what you said. And you just nailed it for me. It's like I'm wearing this like pencil. I'm seeing this booty. Then I'm seeing these boobs. And then I'm seeing this like super dark eye makeup. And then I'm seeing these really big earrings. It's like too much. Right. You don't know what to focus on. Right. That's right. It's visual confusion. So pick one thing. Pick your eyes. Pick your breasts. Pick your legs. Pick Coco Chanel said put all of the jewelry on 
And before you leave the house, take one thing off. And I think there's something really amazing about that, right? It's like good art is often about editing and bring it right. Like good writing is about yeah. editing. Yep. Good painting is about edit. Like what's the thing that you need to cover up? What's the thing that you need to take off? Like, because otherwise, yeah, it just gets lost. And then you haven't made kind of the statement that you want to make. And then I would say the third thing is wear some color. And again, this may not be as like pertinent for like the South or California. I find that like in New York and like some, I don't know, maybe all over the place, God, it's like impossible to find color these days. Like you go in the store, everything is gray, like a blue, like cornflower blue, white, and like black. And I'm like, where's the red? Where's yes. the orange? I just bought something red. I feel really sassy about it. And I wore it at an event and everyone was like, damn, I got to get me a red blouse. <laughs> I was like, yes. for me, that was like, oh. and someone noticed I wore a color, I wore like a red lipstick, which I never do. Yeah. I like so got out of my comfort zone, girl. I'm so proud of you. I know. It was big for me. But anyway, yeah, red. Because <laughs> I'm all like black and gray and brown, black and gray and brown. Right. And the reason that we're all black and gray and brown is because color is about visibility and it's about confidence. You get noticed in color. And we shame people when they wear color, right? Like, really, we do. If you think about like, Someone who's wearing a color that's really bright might get painted as a little bit too much. Oh, that woman's just a bit too much. You know what I mean? She's wearing a bit too much perfume or she's wearing, like it, it's, it is about, color is about putting ourselves out there in the world. Like we get noticed, you know? Mm. So wear a color and there's always, there's also like amazing psychology to color, right? So red is about sassy. Orange is the color of, um, you know, I always, th I always love this, like, you know, the sexuality chakra and the creativity chakra are the exact same chakra and they are the color orange. I love it. When I found that out, I wore orange for like a year. Uh, I was like, <laughs> I was like, cause I was working both on my sexuality and on my creativity that year. And I was like, you know, taking painting classes. And I just like kept wearing orange. And also it's a really good color. It's totally overlooked. Um, I will say one more thing about color. Some women, so women have different reads and frequencies. Some of us have a more muted tone to our skin and our hair. We're a little bit softer, probably that client that you were talking about. Yep. Some of us have a clarity and a crispness. So when you're choosing your color, you want to think, am I, a, do I have a softer feel to me? And do I want a muted color or do I have a clear, bright, crisp feel to me, my energy, you know, my look, do I want to wear a bright color, right? So that's just like a really quick tip around color. Um, and then obviously there's like undertones. It's just too much. We're not going to get into it we in this can't. podcast. We can't. There's too much. There, there's too much, which is why you all want to find Christine. Um, we're going to have a link to her info on the show notes. Um, Girl boss closet is going to be yeah. a way you can work with her to to build your capsule and get your authenticity in five the five minute thing just really really resonates for me. Um, Christine, I love you. You are amazing. Mm. I'm, I'm I so glad that I met you. So I know. I'm so glad. <laughs> woman, woman, love me. Kiss, kiss. Um, I was never in a sorority, so if I was, I would like I would like sorority hug you, and I'd be like. Ah! Okay, I, my kids are in sororities, so I'm not mocking sororities. Um, <laughs> we will definitely have you back on. I'm doing a capsule. I'm going to do a capsule at the beginning of the year. I think we should, like, come back on. We'll talk about my capsule experience. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what it feels like to 40 things in my closet that I actually wear instead of um, 40 things in my closet that I don't wear and three things that I do. <laughs> which will be, which will be yeah. life affirming and changing. Um, check out Christine, look in the show notes. You definitely want to find her. Is there any place they can follow you on social media? Like right now, if we could just like say, go look at her on, where would they find you fast? I've got a Facebook group, type in the brazen beauty movement and it'll pop up and you can join my group and I will open arm, hug you and love you and bring you in. We're currently doing a self care challenge. So if anybody's interested in that, join us. Awesome. I'm in that, I'm in that Facebook group. So come be part of the, the cool kids club. Um, cause you are all, if you listen to the dating, then 
You're, I do. You are a girl boss. So come, ah. come join the Brazen Beauty Movement with me and Christine. Uh, ladies, and don't forget, if you don't take anything away, make sure it's this. While you're looking sassy, don't forget, date with dignity. We'll talk to you all really soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye.